Hey guys, I hope that you all had a very happy holiday season and I wish all of you a happy new year. I just wanted to make a little video because I am now the proud owner of one copy of Batman Arkham City. And since I've mentioned the games several multiple times in my videos, I thought that I'd share some of my opening thoughts about the game. Arkham City is magnificent. The game is basically what you would get if you took Arkham Asylum, which was already great in its own right, and then you turned it into a sandbox. Everything that was great about Arkham Asylum, the combat, the stealth, the story, all of it me? is still intact in Arkham City. It's just in a new format, that of a sandbox. The combat is still smooth and loads of fun, plus Arkham City introduces new enemy types and the ability to counter multiple enemies at once. Arkham City also has quickfire functions that allow you to use any of the gadgets in combat, not just the battering and bat claw. Speaking of gadgets, Arkham City also introduces a few new gadgets like the smoke pellet and electric charge gun, both of which are immensely useful and fun. The stealthy Predator sections have also been built upon since Arkham Asylum. The new Predator sections introduce new enemies that can disrupt your detective vision, enemies with night vision goggles so they can spot you in the darkness, and every now and then an enemy will grab a hostage which forces you to take out the enemy without being seen and without using any gadgets. The AI in the Predator sections has also been improved. Grappling up to a gargoyle doesn't automatically shake enemies anymore, so you have to be a lot more careful that you don't get seen by the enemies. Basically, everything that was great about Arkham Asylum has been improved in Arkham City. There's a ton of variety and, being an open world game, there are a ton of things to do. The game has so much content that it's almost overwhelming. You'll be going through the story missions when, all of a sudden, you get bombarded with two or three optional side quests, and none of the side quests feel like padding, they're all fun and intriguing, and you'll actually want to do them. For example, early in the story I was on my way to confront the Joker for the first time, when suddenly I was told that I could do a training program to get the grapple boost upgrade. While I was doing that, I heard a flare go off and I decided to go off to investigate. That triggered a subquest where I help Bane track down leftover Titan crates. Some of the crates are near my position, so I go investigate. While I'm doing that, I hear a telephone ringing, and I have to find another pharaoh across the city, or else a hostage gets killed. So I go racing across the city. The next thing I know, an hour and a half has gone by, and I've completely forgotten about the story mission. That's how immersive the subquests can be. Speaking of subquests, the Riddler challenges are back. Arkham Asylum had 240 Riddler challenges. Arkham City has 400! Plus an additional 40 for Catwoman. The challenges are a lot harder in Arkham City, the riddles don't have as obvious solutions, and since the game world is so huge, the solutions are harder to find. There are also Riddler challenges that involve doing specific things in combat, like getting a times 30 combo or surprising an enemy by shooting him with the mini charge gun. Instead of finding maps to reveal Riddler challenge solutions, you have to interrogate informants who are working for the Riddler. Informants are always scattered among other groups of enemies. To interrogate a thug, you have to knock out all of the other goons in a fight, except for the informant. This adds a great extra element to the combat because you're forced to purposefully leave one enemy alive during the fight. And this can happen in the Predator sections too, where you have to ignore one enemy and take out everyone else. The only slightly annoying thing is that sometimes when you do an instant takedown, you accidentally hit the Riddler informant instead of the enemy that you were aiming for. And this has happened to me about three times now. However, much like Arkham Asylum, I've had a few problems with Arkham City. First and foremost, you can probably tell that the game is running super slowly, and this is on my home's good internet connection. The problem isn't the internet connection like it is with Arkham Asylum. I'm pretty sure that this is the lowest graphics setting, but I'm not sure. The first time that I ran the game, I was given the chance to change the settings and adjust the graphics, which I did, and I have not gotten the option to change these settings any other time that I've run the game. I'm pretty sure that the problem is my graphics card, and the problem there is that a new graphics card costs about 100 to 200 plus dollars. For crap's sake, I could probably buy a used Xbox 360 for that price, and then just play Arkham City on that! I have a code that I can redeem to get the Joker's Carnival Map DLC, but I have to go to the Windows Live Marketplace to do it, and the game won't let me go to the Marketplace unless I'm signed into Windows Live. Only one problem. I AM SIGNED INTO WINDOWS LIVE! What the hell is the problem? And since I can't go to the Marketplace, I can't get the Robin, Nightwing, or Costume DLC packs either. And although I really like this game, I do have one major complaint. It is not fun to play as Catwoman. Oh, you can beat the tar out of enemies just fine as her, but exploring the city just sucks. Batman can glide and use a fast grapple gun. Catwoman just whips between buildings, which isn't nearly as fun or nearly as fast. Plus, Catwoman's only gadgets are the whip, caltrops, and bolas, none of which I've had a use for as of yet and Catwoman's fabulous animated ass does not change my view on this matter. 
I haven't gotten all the way through the story yet, but it doesn't seem like Catwoman's sections add anything to the main story except for a few extra villains like Poison Ivy. In fact, I think that the Catwoman DLC detracts from the game's story. The opening of the game is very tense and perfectly atmospheric, but before you get to that you have to beat up a few goons as Catwoman, which accomplishes nothing in regards to the story. When you visit the Joker and Batman gets knocked unconscious, you switch over to Catwoman again, so the game interrupts a great and intense scene so that you can dick around the city whipping stuff for a few minutes. I've only gotten to one Catwoman section of the story so far, and I made damn sure Seriously. to get it over with as quickly as possible. But those are all just appetizers to my biggest problem with the game. You may have noticed that in this video, I haven't included any footage of exploring the city. There's a very good reason for this. I have gotten stuck. I'm to the part in the game where you fight Ra's al Ghul. Oh, spoiler warning, you fight Ra's al Ghul. After you tase him in the nuts a few times and beat the crap out of him, he takes Talia hostage. And right here is where I hit a massive problem. My controls are locked up. I can't do anything. I can't move, I can't cycle through gadgets, I can't aim or ready gadgets, the quick fire combos aren't working. I am completely frozen. I mashed every button on my keyboard and my mouse, and none of the do buttons do anything except for the escape key, which opens the game's pause menu. I figured there has to be something very specific that I'm supposed to do, so I looked up a walkthrough and it says that you're supposed to throw a batarang at Roz's head. Problem is, I can't! I can't go through my gadget to select the batarang, I can't aim the batarang even if I have it selected before I get here, and the batarang quick fire combo won't work. So it's not something specific that I'm supposed to do. The game is screwed up. I have never encountered this problem with a game before. I have never played a game with such a game-breaking bug in my life. I have fought this boss seven times, and my controls lock up at this exact point every time. I'm just stuck. There's nothing, that's all there is to it. And the worst part is that I can't leave and go back to the city before I go to the boss fight, so I can't leave and do subquests. I'm stuck here. I emailed Warner Brothers Games support about this problem, and I'm hoping that they get back to me soon, because unless I feel like starting the game over, and I don't, this game has been rendered unplayable. Ar Batman Arkham City would be one of the best games that I've ever played, if only I could get the damn thing to work. This is why I hate PC games. This is why I stick to my Wii. Speaking of my Wii, I'll just have to go play my other new game, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, until I hear back about Warner Brothers games to fix Arkham City. Return to Dreamland is fun, it's bright and colorful, and best of all, it actually works. You cannot beat us! The hell I can't! I'M THE GODDAMN BATMAN!